uh, to integrate MOSA, which is going to be key in lower air tier domain uh, for general purpose, to be able to rapidly integrate new technology and capability onto the Black Hawk. We are also have demonstrated advanced digital vehicle management systems, such as fly-by-wire. We're currently flying uh, Black Hawk with a fly-by-wire system uh, with, with the U.S. Army. And we have demonstrated and actually have over 100 flight hours into fully optionally Haruti uh, Black Hawk. And I'm sure some of you have seen the news Earlier in the year, we completely flew the Black Hawk with no pilots. And the intent uh, is really to provide opportunities not only to the US Army, but to the international armed forces to leverage AI and autonomous solutions to better uh, um, target the operations and pro providing the commander the flexibility on flying a mission with two people and reducing uh, uh, their workload or deciding to fly with just one pilot uh, on, on the aircraft or for certain mission like maintenance flight test or uh, area resupply uh, to have no pilot on the aircraft. So that's something we're working with the US Army. We're in discussion also with some of the international partners of the United States on those technology. But in a nutshell, that's why you're gonna you're gonna see the evolution of the Black Hawk with third generation, with all of those technology, you're gonna see a progression of fourth and fifth generation integrated into the Black Hawk. And with that, we have a little video uh, that we wanna show you. Uh, and then Leon is gonna take us more into the UK competition and, and the Black Hawk. Um, so, uh, Natalie mentioned a number of technologies that are important. I want to emphasize that the Black Hawk that you're seeing here, we consider that to be the third generation of the Black Hawk. If you compare that to the original uh, 1970s version of the uh, 60A, the Alpha model, um, visually it might look very similar to you, but technically it is quite evolved. Uh, many, many improvements, literally thousands of improvements based on the experience that the team has had over that period, working very closely for, predominantly with the U.S. Army and other customers around the world. So the 60M that you see for the U.S. Army now and the 70I that you see outside is a vastly evolved aircraft with its uh, origins. Um, Natalie touched on the growth that we've seen here in Europe. I uh, want to also point out and emphasize for you that we have a factory in Mailitz, Poland that is producing black box. Uh, she mentioned a number of our recent customers. One of the more significant growth areas we've been producing helicopters for the Philippines. Uh, we started off with the delivery last year and the year past uh, of the first 16. And earlier this year, uh, they signed a contract for an additional 32 very significant fleet worldwide and uh, you know we are putting things in place in order to uh, support them in the long term we think that's going to be one of the largest fleets uh, in the world on the international category um, so one of the important messages that I, that I hope you take from here is that uh, we are very engaged in this new medium helicopter we think we're well positioned to compete in this um, and we've committed to the pursuit uh, we've uh, actually recently submitted our responses to the DPQQ, which uh, is something that preceded um, an expected request for proposal that we anticipate later in the year. We have a team positioned to do that and ready to, to go. Um, we are ready now, we think, uh, you know, from a requirements perspective, this is an aircraft that is uh, very, very mature. Uh, we've uh, essentially developed just about every feature that you might uh, imagine in the nearly 5,000 that we've delivered around the world, uh, not just the U.S. Army. Um, so, you know, uh, we feel that, that we're very well uh, positioned with that. 
And uh, you know, there's an important aspect, which is the impact to the local industry here. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, some folks are trying to act like this is something new for us. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, our collaboration with Westland in particular, going back uh, well over a thousand aircraft. So we know how to do this. We've done this around the world and uh, this has got the appropriate scale and, and so forth that we would, um, we have every intention of collaborating to that degree here. Uh, there's already some uh, experiences. You, you might know that the engines on a black rock are, are provided by GE. You might also know that uh, GE has a facility here in Portland that uh, supports those GE engines. Uh, so you know, that would be like a very simple example of that to emphasize as to the ability to sustain uh, Black Hawks here in the region. Uh, the factory is very close. Uh, this aircraft flew here in a matter of two, two legs, um, so not 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 not, uh, not difficult. Uh, there's other customers that are operating the Black Hawk here in the air. As one of the Firehawks, right? So we don't put these things on Firehawks, just to, if you're curious, right? So what I wanted to mention is that, and I mentioned inside, it's uh, an aircraft that is designed to be very um, adaptable. So we were able, we didn't fly across Europe with these on here either, so these were installed here recently in order to get the impression. We see some other equipment installed on the other side. Uh, we talked about accessibility to the uh, airframe and to the maintenance of this aircraft. It's something that was actually learned many decades ago and drove the design of this aircraft. And if, if, if someone picks an aircraft that's uh, not designed to be kind of maintained out in an austere environment like this, uh, there's going to be a lot of additional equipment, a lot of uh, additional uh, platforms and things that are required. So um, this aircraft has a lot of capability with that respect. I'm going to have the guys uh, at some point here open up for the engine A matter of moments, each one, they're designed basically to be uh, structurally uh, capable. This seat has got a lot more capability than it appears. It's not designed for comfort. You wouldn't want to put your mom in here for a long time. But this seat can handle 20 Gs in a hard landing. So 20 Gs is more than any of us would like to experience in a normal condition. It makes this aircraft, honestly, one of the most survival plat platforms in the world, right? You never want to get into that situation, but between the landing gear and the mechanisms that were designed from the beginning in order to absorb all that energy, this is a very survival machine. Situation where you needed to access an engine, and it wasn't designed, I don't know if you noticed, but he climbed there. I don't, he looks like a young man, but he's probably not one, right? Um, and he, he's able to go up there very easily. This is designed to, to hold the weight of two technicians, right? And you don't have to drag anything up to the aircraft in order to do that, right? He's up there doing the inspection, which is part of the regular takeoff mechanism, right? The, the pre-flight, uh, they're able to do maintenance and inspection work on the engines. Very, very accessible. Thank you. Go to that gearbox, check the oil. It's very simple. But if, if you don't have a mechanism to climb up there, right, it's not going to work. Now this young man is going to show you that this is designed from the very beginning, right, to support that inspection. Always makes me nervous, but trust me, they do this before every flight, so it's, it's normal. So there he is. I don't know how long that took. Again, he doesn't look like he's 20. He's probably 25. But he's able to get up there and do all those inspections that he needs to do. Again, if you don't have an aircraft that's designed with that to begin with, you're bringing a mechanism, some sort of structure over here that you're going to have to keep locally, that you're going to have to drag along, right? Um, so I wanted to point that. Thank you. Good man.